Hi there, let's continue uh, looking at the uh, circular flow of income model which we started in during the class uh, lecture but we couldn't finish due to time constraints. So if you remember it was a simple model where two agents exist in the economy. The first ones are the ma market uh, sector um, firms or factories or farms or this industrial sector I should say in this case. So this is the market and households. Now, there is no government in the economy, it's only households versus firms. Now, the firms are the producers of goods and services and also employers of factors of production. Uh, households are consumers of the goods that are produced by the firms and also the suppliers of factors of production. Consumers demand the goods and services provided by the firms or the market, so CD. D stands for domestic, so consumption of domestically produced goods. In return, the firms pay uh, wages, uh, rent, and also other payments for uh, supply or for the supply of uh, goods and services. Remember, the first supply, the, the households are suppliers. So the households, the people, in other words, work for the firms here. They also rent out their land capital, and also they buy shares of the firm. In return, payments flow back to the people here, the households, yeah, in simple words. So this is a very simple, simplistic model of the economy. And I guess it's quite clear now, yeah? So economy is just made up of two agents without the government intervention or third agents or third or fourth agents. So the consumption of goods and services, so the, uh, the households consume goods and services of the firm, firms in return, employ and uh, pay for the supplies of uh, factors of production labor no sorry labor land capital capital equipment could be any in any form houses warehouses factories these are all owned by the households so it's a it's a sort of self-sustaining uh, kind of circle flow of income in this case so income flows back income goes out from households flows back so it's exactly the, the, the same amount is just flowing within the economy it is possible that the the not not exactly amount um, it will be circulated, but uh, by the way, this this question we I asked this, so I'm gonna skip that for now. Uh, answer is just below here. You can stop and read the answer if you want. But uh, just wanted to I wanted to continue with the with the model here. So if I remember, I was talking about the payments not being equal. Basically, the uh, the the fact of payments for example you might receive a pound here as a, as a household but then we may not uh, spend all the pound on consumer goods because there is the uh, the third agent banks or financial markets we might want to save part of our income from the from the factory for example yeah we might put it in the bank account and then save it also, net savings could also be negative in the sense that it might flow backwards in the sense in, in the form of loans, yeah? But in this simple model, let's assume that savings flow into the banks and then banks do not usually keep our cash in their accounts, they just invest them in firms again. So the money is withdrawn and is also injected back into the economy. So the green uh, line here represents the injection of cash from the economy so the red line shows the withdrawal of the cash uh, from the economy in the form of savings and uh, banks then uh, obviously retain the cash if they wish to they could invest it outside the economy that implies basically that means basically a complete outflow of the cash from the economy but they might as well in inject or in the form of investment put the money into the factories back into the factories so they could be buying the shares of the business or lending out for uh, building the new factories. So the withdrawn cash, at least part of it, will be injected back into the economy. Now, government, when it participates, its role is to tax and regulate. When, when we receive income, we pay part of the income as tax. Remember, national insurance, the tax, corporate tax, or the self-employed tax, employment tax, all of these go into the government's uh, budget. Now, it is also possible that the arrow goes backwards because the government may as well pay dividend uh, benefits 
but then usually we expect the net taxes to be positive going into government in the form of tax revenues now government doesn't usually keep the cash in its accounts again it actually uses part of it or all of it even more than that to to for example build roads and to build roads they they will use make use of the factories or firms services or they might build uh, buildings uh, houses or many other public uh, amenities for example if you think of NHS to build NHS government uses uh, private constructors and the tax money that we pay will be used to pay for this service and goods so again with the part of the withdrawn cash here in the form of net taxes will go back in the form of uh, expenditure or investment into the firms again so we have that uh, withdrawals converted to injections here now in fact we well I'm, I'm jump, jumping a bit but if you look at what we consume on a daily basis much much of it is produced outside the UK so part of our income goes into import expenditure abroad so the TV you have in your living room comes from China the sofa you sitting maybe is from Europe and the car you driving could be from Germany yeah the clothes that you'd be wearing could be uh, from Bangladesh and many other countries yeah and the and the and the, the the groceries you purchase from Lidl are mostly from Germany Tesco is mostly from British obviously but some come from outside so part of the income that we receive in the form of factor payments will go into imports as well imported goods as well so the co money is withdrawn completely here out of the system here out of our domestic economy it goes out into other countries but then other countries the firms from other countries also spend part of their income that they receive from us uh, uh, in on, on, on the goods and services produced by this economy let's say this is British economy yeah so financial services provided to German and Chinese companies technology services provided architectural services the medical services and so on and so forth so it will come back to the economy in the form of expert revenues yeah so a lot of cash goes out or withdraw is withdrawn from domestic economy but then a lot of it or well, most of it comes back even more might come back depending on the exchange rate if the if they if we're interested in increasing our experts anyway so injections they know that here as j are investment government expenditure investment by basically uh, private firms government expense and then the expert expenditure here uh, withdrawals are in the form of savings so people might decide to save more so that means uh, part of the income is taken away from the economy and also t tax revenue taxes are uh, could could uh, taxes could also be uh, increased or decreased as a result the amount of money from this economy flowing out increases and decreases and also we might also buy or will in fact buy a lot of goods and services from outside the economy so these are all withdrawals withdrawals in the sense that this some of the cash will be taken out from the from the economic system the, the circle of motion here you know, will be taken out so in fact cd is probably much of it is 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 paid is um, is is because of the income or the goods and service that we uh, well in in the sense that cd at the moment it just represents the local economy goods and services the consumed goods and services that are produced by the domestically domestic firms but cd will be very small amount compared to the import expenditure that we have the the amount that we import and uh, and consume is larger these days in the past in 70s and 80s cd was the greatest amount um, the large large fraction of our demand would be cd but in these days much of our well it's a, it's a characteristics of developed economies that imports become cheaper as a result we consume more imported goods anyway so this is just a, a simple or uh, single simple model of uh, circle you know, flow of income uh, of an economy now if you remember we i, we, I talked about savings being uh, investments in the end in other words we save banks invest back into the system via financial institutions yeah um, well that's the link between savings and investments taxation is linked uh, through government expenditure to the economy for example taxation is a form of withdrawal of the cash but then it comes back in the form of government expenditure and also imports goods and services 
takes away our income, part of our income, but then part of it comes back again in the form of experts, which is missing here. So that's the kind of link between the injections and withdrawals. And if, when they are equal, obviously we'll have that J equals W here, the equilibrium in the circle of flow. But it may not be the case always. And in fact, it is the case that we always have either J being greater or W being greater here. So that's because decision to save, for example, is is made by one agent and investment decisions are made by the uh, by another agent so we might invest 100 pounds into a bank or save in a, in a bank but then bank might decide only spend to to invest uh, 50 pounds of it into the economy yeah and then they might decide to keep the another 50 in their bank accounts yeah that's the possibility as a result we have this equilibrium here where savings are greater than the investments so a lot of more more money is, is taken away from the economy than in, invested in the economy government might as well decide to run a budget surplus in other words increase the taxation keep them keep much of the tax in there as a revenue uh, keep it in the budget but do not spend this uh, this year for example and that implies the low amount of injections and high amount of withdrawals yeah but in the equilibrium well what well, that's what happens here in in real in real life the governments or the the economy tends towards the equilibrating point that's when the injections equal withdrawals but it mightn't be the case in that case what happens well let's assume the case here that the injections are greater than withdrawals this is when more money is invested than withdrawn there will definitely then be an uh, increase in aggregate demand that's because level of expenditure rises so for example if the green is greater here than the red lines here red red uh, red uh, figures that means the firms then uh, is uh, are selling more because expert expenditure implies greater demand for exported goods from us so we produce and sell more government expenditure means uh, government is using firms to build houses and whatever they want maybe NHS maybe high-speed rail maybe bridges maybe canals and things like this so greater demand and also investment implies the firm is able to build extra capacity so it can hire more people so employment will increase uh, the firm pay out well uh, wages greater wages so factor payments in increase as a result with the factor payments increases the national income that implies we're consuming more and at the same time we're saving more yeah at the same time so as we save more obviously with the high income we're also paying more taxes and again with high income we're buying more import goods as a result withdrawals in increase and as this circle motion continues in this form the, the withdrawals eventually equal the injections so as I said the economy tends to this point where J equals W so eventually that's what happens withdrawals equal the uh, injections now this takes some time however it doesn't really happen overnight this circle motion will have to undergo a lot of sort of movements on a, on a monthly basis imagine so, how much money will be paid how much is kept here this is this is the what what how it how it works in reality so factor payments occur every month for example in terms of wages every month in terms of installment payments on mortgages and capital rents and borrowings and things like this yeah now what happens uh, to the economy then as a result well we have the economic growth increasing with this uh, acceleration in the in the flow of income or money from uh, income and money are not the same things but we'll, I'll leave it for now so economic growth increases rate of economic growth increases unemployment declines because we have higher amount of employing or the accelerated economy that implies we need more uh, labor to work in the factories and and then as a result what happens is that as we as the firms see that the, the demand for their goods they raise the prices so inflation increases and also because of the active uh, growth in economic activity exchange rate strengthens in other words the currency uh, becomes stronger British for example the pound becomes stronger because the economy is strong going strong and that means high uh, low exchange rates in other words a strongly British pound implies we can purchase more uh, uh, I shouldn't say low it should be high exchange rate if you're looking at the pound to US dollar for example US dollar might be it might be the case that one pound is two US dollars then we demand more goods and services from from the US if it's the about with the euro or Chinese yuan then obviously we demand more uh, goods and services from these countries 
given that we have a higher exchange rate relative to their currencies. So, so our currency is valued strongly, in other words, relative to their theirs. As a result, this withdrawal also increases as well. However, higher inflation, basically, if you notice that we said inflation rises, higher inflation or the uh, the, the the increase in the price price of the goods and services produced domestically basically uh, reduces our competitiveness or affects our competitiveness in international markets negatively because high prices of goods and services uh, made in in the UK will be even higher at the exchange rate for example for Chinese people yeah so they may not buy eventually our goods and services right so as a result of the inflation we have experts declining eventually so then this is obviously circle of motion so then our injections will decline while withdrawals increase eventually higher withdrawals means more injections so it's a self-sustaining uh, free market economic movement here economic activity yeah so the only way that this can be disrupted is when we have this external uh, events like uh, uh, natural events natural well natural uh, disasters for example the the east uh, beast from the east for example last week the snow uh, decelerated the economic growth apparently about 1 billion was lost in economy last last week alone so e every day so 5 billion is lost already from the economy because of activity uh, slowing down yeah but eventually we could come back to the uh, normal uh, normal circle circle motion again uh, as the as the days become warmer and warmer get warmer and warmer okay we'll discuss that in the lecture later okay just a quick question here well this has been answered a rise in experts i didn't realize that i my I, I didn't i didn't realize that i answered this quickly <laughs> okay so which of the following would represent the rise in aggregate demand if you remember aggregate demand part of agreement com component of aggregate demand was was uh, experts and as the experts increase demand increases falling consumption no it's actually aggregate demand declines uh, increasing taxes increases the withdrawals so it's not part of uh, aggregate demand falling investment so investment is part of it but falling investment implies declining aggregate demand and rising savings is just increasing the withdrawals not the uh, not the injections so injections anything that's really a component of injections is basically component of aggregate demand so that's savings sorry investments uh, consumption and experts so savings and taxes are not part of injection sorry so savings is not part of it's actually part of withdrawals and injections is actually investment so savings become investments but then um, they are made by two different people so they are not really uh, uh, they may not be in, in necessarily equal okay so the answer here is obviously a rise in experts a rise in consumption would do the same result a rise in investment would have given us the same result anyway i'll stop here at this point See you in the next video.